Hey guys, Jay here. This is smarthelping.com. We're looking at a template to analyze loan portfolios or loan tapes. I've done a bit of this in the past for different clients. Uh, I never made a template though that could be, be reusable with some general stats and dashboards. Uh, I'll go through each tab really quick and then I'll kind of break down each tab in detail after. So we've got the data tab where you dump in all your data. You'd clear out this by right clicking clear content and then you drop in your data into each column accordingly. L and the MR formulas that you would drag down. We've got a monthly summary of all the data for up to five years and that can be extended as well by um, dragging the formulas further to the right of all these stats. We've got a dashboard uh, showing a snapshot of the current portfolio and its past performance. We have these visuals here and we'll go through again in this in more detail. And we have a cash flow analysis of the future expected principal and interest that is expected to be collected from the portfolio, as well as a discount of cash flow analysis and NPV of that and a chart. You can see we've done some calculations for future expected principal and interest for the portfolio. This can go down for thousands of rows. You can always drag the bottom rows down even more though uh, and extend the sum total uh, for 5, 10, 15, 30,000 loans would be fine to analyze in this. Um, okay, so it, let's get into the details though. So if we go back here to the data tab, um, the first thing I had to do with this template was figure out what columns make sense for the most amount of people. So to me, loan ID is going to be important. So you can see loan IDs here and match it up uh, for future cash flows. So loan ID uh, origination date is going to be relevant if we want to do any time series analysis like loans settled per month, amount settled per month, uh, weighted average interest rate of the portfolio over time. So we have to have the origination date or essentially the loan settle date. A risk rating. Now I've done... Um, I've done arbitrary six possible risk ratings here. And you could assign different values to A through F, whatever that might be, and label it over here. But this needs to stay A through F. Um, if you do change the risk rating here, like say this was AA or something, it should update. Yeah, it updates throughout here and the dashboard. Perfect. So you can change these if you want, but if you do change the names of these, you also need to ch change accordingly what your risk rating is here. Now, if you do that, it's fine. You can put in any risk rating labels you want uh, and it'll update. Loan type, this isn't tied to anything, but just for your own analysis, you can put in a loan type. Uh, interest rate, self-explanatory, it's the interest rate of the loan. The term in months, so if it's a 20 year loan, 240 months, if it's a 10 year loan, you'd put 120 months, um, whatever the case may be. The paid off date, so any paid off dates will not be counted in some calculations or it will be relevant for other calculations. So it's important that you put a date in here if it's paid off or not. Um, like it's not, if, if uh, this is paid off, then it won't count in the active loans count, for example. Um, Initial loan amount, self-explanatory, remaining balance. Now this remaining balance isn't super important for many of the, uh, the only calculation this really goes to is on the dashboard, um, current balance of active loans. So it'll do it by risk rating in, in total. And that's just taking any loan that doesn't have a paid off date or a default date and then summing up any of the remaining balances of any of uh, any that fits that criteria. Uh, and then remaining term. Now this remaining term is very important if you care about the cash flow analysis because what it does is looks at the, um, to get the right payment number, we need to know what the remaining term is relative to the starting term. And that gives you the start month here. So if, if there's, if this is a 240 month loan and you put 240 here, that means it's gonna run for a full 20 years. Um, which you can see it does actually and we have 20 years worth of data so you can see the whole loan term for this one uh, You can see if I sum up all the principal paid is 50,000 
to 50,000 loan. If I did like 80,000, you can see now the principal is 80,000. So that is how that works. If this were, let's say there's only 36 months left. Okay, that tells you you're on payment 204. And that's important for using the payment functions to figure out how much principal uh, and interest is calculated into the future. And see, now it stops here after uh, after 36 more payments. So as long as you have the remaining term here, then you will get an accurate cash flow analysis here. Um, you want to make sure on the remaining term, you put a zero if it's defaulted or paid off so it doesn't get counted. So you can see all these ones that are defaulted or um, paid off are not counted in here. They're just zeros. And then these two columns, again, are formulas. If you want to drag it down, I think I put it down to, you know, a couple th a thousand. You can just highlight the bottom of it, hit the little bottom right drag here and just drag it down as far as you want. If you have more data than a uh, thousand uh, loans, you could do drag, drag it down as much as you need. Um, this is obviously a calculation to help figure out future cash flows. And this column M is for weighted average interest rate basis. Okay, so that's the data tab um, pretty, uh, pretty thoroughly explained what notes I have. So leave blank if no default has happened, right? Put zero if paid off or defaulted. If defaulted, keep remaining balance as the amount of... Oh, yeah. So if it has defaulted, you want to keep the principal balance here that was defaulted because we've got some calculations to figure out like the total amount that you've originated over time and then the total amount that has defaulted relative to that over time in a percentage. So that's an important uh, number. So if it has defaulted, remaining balance should be whatever it had left at default on the principal. And then you also want to make sure you put the date in here if it's defaulted and put a zero in for the remaining term. Okay, monthly summary. So here we can see some stats about the loan portfolio history. So what we can show is how many loans were settled each month by risk rating and in total. Again, this is going for five years. If you had more data than that, you could just highlight this last column just like this and then drag it over as much as you want. You can go for as many months as you want. It'll just keep going. You can also adjust your start month here. So if I wanted to start this in like 2015, okay, now it's gonna show me data from 2015 through to 2020, uh, 2019, full five years. And then you could also drag that over uh, if you wanted. So that's how to adjust that. Um, and you wanna put the last day of the, uh, the month you're starting at here. Um, doesn't have to be a fiscal year uh, beginning could be any any month here it's just going to go forward in time so loans originated we've also got the amount you've originated by risk rating and in total per month you've got the defaults so you can see here when we start to get the defaults the count of defaults per month in total and by risk rating you've also got the weighted average rate of loans settled this was a pretty complicated calculation um, but well, these two both were, but this is showing you in that month, all the loans that are settled, what was the weighted average interest rate of those. And then here in 35 was even a, a more fun calculation to understand over time, what was the weighted average rate of the ongoing portfolio. And this is not including um, any defaulted loans. And it's checking as well to see if it's um, if the loan has been paid off or not. So for example, like uh, here we have uh, in April, 2023, getting uh, some of the loans getting paid off. So you can see here, we are now zero basis. So we're only counting uh, basis one and three. And that's just saying, um, The basis is this weighted average rate basis, which is just taking the um, initial loan amount times the interest rate. And then 
that is getting divided by the original loan amount. So summing up this divided by this, if all the different criteria are met, and that gives you at any point in time what your weighted average um, interest rate is. Now I've done all the calculations. So basis one through four is doing the individual calculations and then using that to figure out what the weighted average rate is. So these are all separate. Again, we're looking at, um, you know, the dates in B and G, which are paid off date and origination date to figure out if it's active or not. And that's how we know what the rate is over time of the whole portfolio, as long as you have this data in here. Uh, we also got portfolio default rate. So this is looking at the total loans originated over time, the total defaulted over time, and then what's the default rate. Also, you've got default rate by risk rating. So here, um, interestingly, you've got a total default rate of 33%. Um, but that's 50% of these and 67% of these and none of the others. So your average, so, so in this case, and these are just arbitrary numbers, risk rating B and D are the ones that defaulted. So those individual cohorts of loans have higher default rates, but overall the whole portfolio is at 33% because only three of the nine loans have uh, defaulted. Then we've got average uh, amount defaulted by risk rating. So this is just in a given month, how much did we default? And then we have an interesting calculation here doing the total originated over time and then the total defaulted over time as a cumulative total. So that's interesting and the percentage of that over time. So that's another good way to look at the portfolio and analyze it. You've also got cumulative originated by risk rating. So now we're looking at all of the originations. Doesn't matter if it's defaulted or not. We're looking at everything that was originated and summing that up for each risk rating over time. And that'll be used for some cool charts. So that's the monthly detail. Um, dashboard is showing all this different stats. So settled loans to date, active loans, defaulted loans. So we've settled 10 in this case. We have five active. Uh, the other five, we had three that were defaulted and two that were paid off. We've got the portfolio default rate here. Um, amount of loans settled to date. Total uh, average loan amount, 155. And this is just the average in the average per rating. Weighted average interest rate of active loans. This is an interesting calculation. Um, and then the current balance of active loans. And then we've got charts for all this, so monthly loan settled by risk rating, monthly amount of loans settled by risk rating stacked bar. Um, so this is the count, this is amount, this is the cumulative amount of loans settled by risk rating, so this is over time calculation. We've got the uh, ongoing weighted average interest rate of the portfolio as a chart, the ongoing portfolio default rate, amount of defaults by risk rating, total amount of loans originated over time versus total amount of defaulted loans over time and percentage of total amount defaulted. So this is looking at how, how much have I originated of that of principal, how much has defaulted and what's the percentage percentage on the right axis amount on the left. And then our future principal to interest of the loan portfolio, which is just looking at based on the remaining term and the interest rate and uh, loan amount, we can figure that out over the principal and interest for for these. Okay, uh, so what else do we want to see here? I'm trying to think of anything else that's interesting. Uh, oh. So this portfolio default rate is just taking three over 10, which is giving 30, 30%, but this is at 33%. And the reason why I believe, and I'll have to double check, but this is only saying we have nine loans originated. So we must have originated some loans before January, 2023, if I had to guess. So let's look. 
Uh, yeah. So here we have one at two six twenty twenty two. So let's put this. So, so the dashboard looks at all the loans, no matter what time frame. This monthly summary is obviously only starting at whatever start month you put here. So if I were to put this back to twenty twenty, let's say three. Okay. Now you'll see on the dashboard, um, or on the monthly summary, we're also going to be at thirty percent default rate. There's that. Okay, um, what else here? Really cool stuff. Like if you're into loan portfolios and, and analyzing them, or uh, if you work in the industry, this is a pretty good way to analyze the performance and expected future performance. Um, Now it's interesting. So this is going up. This principal is going up, but then it drops a little bit, I believe, because this uh, term is getting paid off. If we were to put these all at 240 months remaining, we're just we're kind of like running an analysis on the uh, original loans by setting the remaining term equal to the whole term. Uh, so yeah, you can see there, nice smooth. Okay, um, what else? I thought I had one more thing I wanted to look at. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, now, one of my most popular financial models templates that I do sell is the um, loan general lending business model under the loan category here, which is like allows you to forecast future uh, revenues, expenses, interest, principal, collections, all that. Um, but it's more for a future projected amount this, uh, the sheet I'm working on that I just showed you guys is more for um, analyzing actuals. Uh, but definitely complementary, like they go together. So I will be putting this, uh, the historical um, loan portfolio analysis dashboard that I just showed you guys, it'll be included in the lending bundle, obviously, no price change. I'm also gonna put it in the other bundle I have, which is the KPI dashboard, sales pipeline dashboards. I'll put it in this because I think it belongs in here as well. And then I, th uh, the price, I don't know. I'm, I'm torn between the price on this template, so we'll see when I put it up. Um, and then, the guys, if you want to check out, I, I build financial models for a living. If you want to see all the templates I've got, you can go to the homepage. You can check out the complete library, download everything for $9.99, over 170 templates. You can also buy by category. Um, I've done a lot of stuff for in the SaaS and recurring revenue spaces, real estate, underwriting tools, um, joint venture, cash flow waterfalls. This is some of the most complicated stuff I've ever built. Uh, general industry financial forecasting models. Uh, you know, cr basically bottom up assumptions to create pro forma template uh, template or pro forma uh, projections. Accounting tools. So some of my most popular ones here are the ARAP tracker, cost segregation study, volume discount pricing, and inventory. Inventory is always very popular. Uh, and I've got some general valuation models as well. So all kinds of templates to check out. Um, what we've done today is going to be you know, primarily in the lending space. Um, I think this is a really cool template. Anybody in the lending industry, this is going to be valuable to them. Alrighty guys, uh, download links in the description box below and like subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. This is smarthelping.com.